Welcome to Electron Line. Now let's take a look at the Van der Waals equation. Well, it turns out that under normal pressure and temperature and under normal volume circumstances, we can get by by using what we call the ideal gas equation, where PV equals RT. Of course, we use the small v to mean the volume per number of moles. But if the pressures are very high, the temperature is very high, and the volume is very small, then the gas molecules in the gas do begin to interact with one another electrically, so there's electrical forces there, and in addition to that, the volume of the molecules, which is typically ignored because it's very, very tiny compared to the volume of the container, when the pressure becomes very high so that the molecules are really close together, then the volume of the molecules actually begin to take effect as well and begin to change so that this equation no longer holds true. Well, van der Waal, a Dutch physicist, came up with the equation to account for those two things. We have an additional term here that we add to the pressure, and this is caused by the intermolecular forces, the electrical forces between them, such that the density, when it becomes very high, so that the volume, relatively speaking, is very small, then we need to add this term because then the effect of pressure increases by the term A divided by V squared. Again, V is the volume per mole, and A is a constant specific for each specific gas, and we'll see a little bit more about that. In addition to that, he also realized that when the volume of the container becomes really small, the molecules get packed very, very close together. When the pressure becomes really high, then the molecules do occupy some of that space of the container. And then in essence, the effective, and that should be an E here, the effective volume decreases. And so van der Waal accounted for that by subtracting term B, B again is specific to the specific gas we're dealing with. Now, that seems fairly straightforward and doesn't seem to be that hard to understand that. When there's intermolecular forces, there's more forces pushing the molecules away from each other that acts as if there's more pressure. And if the volume becomes very small and the molecules begin to take up significant amount of space of that volume, then the effective volume becomes smaller. So that makes a lot of sense. Now, understanding how that affects things is sometimes difficult to visualize. So what I've tried to do here is try to understand what would happen when one or two things change and how does it affect everything else. So for example, when we, took, when we take a look at V minus B, how does it affect the ideal gas equation? What is now different? So let's say that we want to keep the temperature and the volume constant. What will that have to do to the pressure then? If we keep the temperature and the volume constant, well, this will then reduce this term, which means that will cause the pressure to go up. And so the pressure will go up as a response to the volume of the molecules when you want to keep volume and temperature constant. But in other words, if you account for the volume of the molecules, then there is less volume and the pressure will go up. So that's a way to look at it. If the pressure and the volume remain constant, so if these two remain constant, how does it affect the temperature? What do we need to do to the temperature to keep the pressure and the volume constant? Now take into account this term right here. Well, since this now becomes smaller, if these do not change, then of course the temperature must go down as well. So the effect is, if you want to visualize what happens when you account for the volume of the molecules and you don't change the pressure and the volume, then the temperature has to drop and that's what we see here. And finally, what if we want to keep the pressure and the temperature constant and we have to account for the volume of the molecules? So we keep the pressure the same, we keep the temperature the same. What has to happen to the volume of the molecules because we subtract that? Well, then we, then we have to, or the volume of the container, I should say, then the volume of the container has to increase in order to keep the pressure and the temperature constant when we want to take into account the volume of the molecules. And that's what you see over here. Now we do the same with this term here. Again, we, what do we need to do to the pressure if the volume and the temperature wants to remain the same, if we want to keep the volume and the temperature the same? So the temperature doesn't change, the volume doesn't change, and now we add this additional term because of intermolecular forces. So that means that the pressure will have to drop to account for this additional pressure, effective pressure caused by the intermolecular forces. So that's what we mean over here. So next we want to take a look at when we keep the volume and the pressure the same. We want to keep those the same. 
and we have to account for the fact that now there's intermolecular forces. So if the pressure and the volume doesn't change, but now we have additional intermolecular forces to account with, that will cause the temperature to go up because this term becomes bigger now, and that's what we see over here. And finally, what if we want to keep the pressure and the temperature the same? How does it affect the volume if we have this additional term? So now we want to keep the pressure the same, we want to keep the temperature the same, so to keep this the same, but we've added the term, hmm, that means the volume needs to decrease. How does that work? Well, this will increase the pressure, and so an increasing pressure can be accomplished by a decreasing volume. So you can see that it's actually kind of confusing and kind of complicated. Now, I've always found the Van der Waals equation to do just that, confuse us. So first, what we need to do is get a hold of the concept that intermolecular forces increase the effective pressure and considering the volume of the molecules, if we, combine, if we compress them into a small amount of volume, then we have to take into account that the effective volume becomes smaller. Because of that, once we want to keep two of the, two of the three uh, state variables the same, how does it affect the third variable? What do we need to do to the third variable to keep the other two the same? And once you get the feel for that, then it becomes a lot easier to work with the Van der Waals equation. If you don't get that under control, the Van der Waals equation can get very confusing. So we have a few more videos on the Van der Waals equation to help us visualize and understand how that affects things when we work with gases under high pressure and small volume, where we have to take into account the intermolecular, intermolecular forces and the fact that the molecules actually do take up volume. And that's how it's done.